And now, The Lin Wu Chronicles, The House of Dolls, written by P.A. Clark, read by Kate Luer. The House of Dolls I slammed on the brakes abruptly, swerving slightly as I saw the road narrowing in front of me. Watch it, Tina said. I'm trying to redo my makeup before we get there. I rolled my eyes at her as I forced myself to bite my tongue. She had the easy part, sitting in the passenger seat. I, on the other hand, was trying to maneuver a long, winding road which led to our destination, the Marceau Mansion. Tina had been picked by Margot Marceau as a possible candidate for her next creation, the new Marceau doll. Marceau's only daughter had been her sole inspiration for her doll-making over the past several years. However, Marceau had put an ad out to all interested models to send in their photos for possible consideration. Two were asked to show up by invitation only for a photo session over the weekend. Tina was lucky enough to be chosen after sending in her studio photos, which must have cost her a fortune. She was an aspiring model, but had not met any real success yet. She hoped that this would be her big break. As I looked at her again applying eyeshadow and mascara, I thought about how much she had changed over the years. We had been childhood friends in elementary school back when we used to have more in common with each other. But as the years went on, we grew apart— I went to UC Davis now, and she was still in junior college. We kept in touch with one another, though. She did favors for me sometimes, and I did them for her in return. This time I was doing one for her. She asked me to come with her because she was nervous about her big session with Margot Marceau. She remembered me as being good at keeping her head straight during difficult times, so she asked Marceau if I could come along as a friend, and Marceau agreed. I wasn't looking forward to it, though. I had zero interest in becoming a model, but at least I remembered to bring my biology book with me. That way I could get some studying done while Tina was busy. The weekend wouldn't be a total loss for me if I spent my time wisely. As I looked ahead at the road, I could see a sharp turn coming up rapidly. I readied my foot to brake again, but just then, I jumped at the sound of a horn blaring behind me. I looked over my left shoulder and could see a black car flying past me at a dizzying pace. I swerved in order to avoid hitting it as we approached the corner. As I did, I noticed Tina shaking around wildly as she was trying to apply lipstick to her mouth. Lynn, what are you doing? She shouted as I struggled to regain control of the car. I quickly hit the brakes sharply, causing Tina to jerk her arm across her face. When I finally regained control, I looked ahead and watched as the black car soared out of sight. Then I glanced at Tina who now had a red lipstick line running across her face. She glared at me as I tightened my lips. Sorry.